Hi, my name is Stephen Rafferty, and you're watching These Are Questions. This is the internet show where I ask people questions about things, life, and such not. Today's guest is a talented YouTuber that focuses on obscure medias and commentaries based on games, books, comics, TV, and everything in between. He's also the man who calls himself Hipster Trash. Please welcome the one, the only, Billy. Hey, how's everyone doing? Oh, I hope everyone's doing well. That's a better way to say that. <laughs> well, I hope so too. Uh, <laughs> everyone's doing well because we're watching These Are Questions and we're watching you on These Are Questions. Oh, well, it's two good things. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Me, it's, it's you and the viewers. Those are the two good things right there. <laughs> oh, no, no, no self-deprecation. <laughs> no, not on this show. No, what are you talking oh, about? I'll do a little bit. I do a lot. But uh, I rules like that are for to like to tell others not to follow yourself, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Started off strong. Got some good motivation to begin with. It's all downhill from yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> Before we get into the actual interview itself, I need to explain the rules of these are questions. Billiam, I'm going to ask you a series of questions going to be based around your career and aspirations, along with a mixture of questions that are borderline idiotic and, well, randomly stupid. Perfect. Okay. I'll take that perfect as your acceptance to be a part of this show. So, Billiam. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Hipsters, are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Take it as a yes. All right, cool. With that, let's begin. So first off, thank you so much for taking the time to do this interview. It's no secret. We've known each other for quite a long time. Yeah. And as I've said multiple times on multiple videos and interviews and anything I get the chance to talk about you, I'm just so happy to see the successes that you've been able to achieve over the years. You've worked oh, hard. You. You've done so many amazing things. And I'm just happy to call um, you a friend of mine and also just a great individual. Um, no hyperbole, no BS. It's just the truth there. Um, it's so happy to see your successes and what you've done over the years. And, oh. you know, your story is well documented for those who followed your journey. Um, the question I want to ask is how can you reflect on the successes you obtained over the years as a YouTuber and as the man who calls himself, as I've mentioned earlier, hipster trash? Uh, well, I guess I'll go to the hipster trash thing first. Uh, that just kind of comes from, I think it's a lot of YouTubers kind of fall within that realm. I feel like, uh, especially I, uh, adopted that moniker when I was talking about retro games more. Mm -hmm. And to me, nothing's more hipster than going to a thrift store, getting an old TV, like putting so much effort into making sure all the, the, the wires are working and that this old equipment works and then actually playing those games on the original hardware is like vinyl collecting. Mm -hmm. And so like, I, I kind of, it was just an acknowledgement to how I saw the whole community <laughs> at the time, I guess, that I don't think the community itself was acknowledging. <laughs> uh, and now I just, it's there. So I like it, you know, uh, I, as for reflecting on everything, I, I need to do more time just in general to do that. Uh, it's very easy to feel like you're always going somewhere. Right. You know, and not feel like, you know, you finish one project and instead of being proud of the project you've made, you're thinking about the next one. And I can't even finish a project without thinking about the next video immediately. Like it's, uh, but I, I just, you know, I guess I just need to take some time to really think about I, yeah, I have found success and that's very, it's very cool. And I feel very grateful and fortunate to have done that uh, and to have had this as my career, you know, um, and really need to take more time to appreciate it, you know. Of course, but you have plenty of time, you know, it, yes. it, 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 sometimes it's hard to reflect back because you're in the middle of everything and you're just going, 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 you just go into the next thing, next project, next endeavor, whatever the case may be. Um, but it's sometimes it's good to stop and just look at the little things. You just be like, wow, you know, we made yeah. it. Wow. I, I've done been this. trying a little, a little bit more recently to do that it's past maybe like six weeks or so. I've been in a very good mood and very appreciative. So I'm taking more time for sure. That's great. I'm glad to yeah. hear. I'm glad to hear about it. Like I said, it's it's well deserved. Um, oh, thank you so much, man. You're, you're welcome. Yeah. And 
it kind of leads to my next question. And, you know, many of your viewers have, you know, maybe thought about this or maybe asked before. Um, the question I want to ask is, can you explain to the viewers watching this interview your thought process when you're scouting and preparing to review slash commentate on any obscure piece of media? Uh, it's a little bit of what I'm interested in and what I think viewers will watch. Okay. Um, and it's very much a back and forth between that. Uh, but then sometimes and a lot of the time what I'm interested in it ends up being something that I didn't expect such a large audience to see. Uh, like I did a started doing videos on a bunch of uh, old obscure Animal Planet shows that I really loved watching growing up and Discovery Channel shows, like particularly ones where they made stuff up. Yeah. Like, you know, like Megalodon, the D Jurassic shark or that it's not from the Jurassic. It's only like three million years old. <laughs> uh, but it's, you know, this prehistoric shark that's uh, extinct is is they, they pretend like it's real again and they make a documentary. And that was just something I kind of remembered. Uh, and then it just turned out that a ton of people also were super interested in that. And so when I did that first video on a series called The Future is Wild, mm -hmm that one succeeding encouraged me to follow that path a little bit more. So uh, it's doing things I'm interested in, trying to, you know, smell out what the audience is feeling and then following what works a little bit. And then I, I, I like to do a variety of stuff just because it's just, it'd be boring if I was doing the same kind of content all the time. Of so course. sometimes I'll, I'll have a toy and for like a third of the videos, I'll improv me trying to figure out how it works, looking through the manual. And the other two thirds of it are me commenting on commercials and uh, actually like scripting, like what the thing is like to use and little stories from my childhood. Uh, and so each kind of super category I do uh, or a little category of video I do has its own creative process to it. And I enjoy and dislike each one of those processes. And so just keeping it, I mean, you know, if, if this was my hobby, I'd be doing this six times a year, I'd make six videos a year, you know, but it's not. So I make 20 plus <laughs> videos a year. And so, um, <laughs> yeah. it's just making sure that it stays interesting. And right now I'm working, I've been working the past four months on a single video about the TV show lost. Yes. And it's, uh, it, I'm just fine having a lot of fun. It's very out of my wheelhouse to take such time to do something. And I hold on, wait, where are these? And so like, I have actually purchased like all these magazines. Wow. Uh, and so part of the show, is I'm gonna go through all these old archives or part of the video I'm doing is I'm and I'm actually gonna try to paint a like like a picture of the audience's reaction while the show was going on. Ooh. Yeah, that's, and that's just, so cool. And that's just taken a very long time <laughs> to do. But it's very different and I'm fine, I'm having a lot of fun in, uh doing it. And then yesterday and today, it's such a long video, and there's the videos are divided, it's divided into chapters. Mm -hmm. And so in between each chapter, there's gonna be a little skit. And so they're like less than a minute long, if that. And so we were out filming that yesterday and today, and hopefully it's gonna come together by the end of the week. <laughs> That's good. You, you heard it yes. here first. Um, and I know it's gonna come out awesome when it gets, does get formally released. Um, oh, and it, it's good to have kind of a, like a special video to kind of encapsulate everything that kind of has like your fun project with, not that all your videos are not fun or anything like that, but you know, you have like that one where it's like, I really yeah. hope this works. I want to really work on <laughs> yeah. this. You know, I want to do this. Um, so I know the feeling of that. And I know the feeling of releasing six videos in a year because that's what I do. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's much. like, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about starting to make like short films and stuff. Yeah. And I'll do like one of those a year. And that'll kind of be like a, a thing to do, you know, like just yeah. always, always be creating. And I, I see you doing that. I mean, you're always jumping from one project to the next. It's not just, you know, you, you say you do six videos a year, but like you're, you're like uh, volunteering to host things and you're directing little projects and all that. I mean, it's all, it's all the same, you know, like, yeah. it's just always, and like, I'm trying to learn piano right now. Oh, really? I would, yeah. I, would, I mean, it's, it's been on and off just because of uh, like, I, I'm trying to get a consistent work schedule. That's my goal in life right now is I, I'll work. If I can get a consistent work schedule, I can start doing a lot more stuff like this. And I've taken lessons, uh, but I would just love to play live music, you know, and uh, whoever's there hears it. Well, if you ever decide to create your own, I guess, 
uh, your own band or your own production in music. I mean, I'll be listening to it and you can definitely get a lot of viewers to listen, <laughs> you know, why not? Yeah. But yeah, even, even to that though, I just kind of want to do some more stuff that I find in, uh, engaging to me. And if people like it, they like it, but you know, I need to breathe a little bit and, you know, enjoy what I'm doing. Of course, of course, of course, yeah. definitely. Um, but thank you for letting me know about that. Um, that's pretty cool. Um, I learned something new today. My next question is, if you were competing in a chili cook-off, what would be the signature name of your chili? You can't use hipster trash. Okay. Uh, my signature name of my chili. Jeez, you're putting me on the spot. Uh, I guess uh, hipster gold. Mm, okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> which I, I, I always thought, I don't know what it would be, but I want to use that as a label for something. <laughs> For the chili you're gonna make. For the chili. Yes. So it's going to be for my chili. Yes. Uh, which will be sold on Uber Eats. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, and it will be called Hipster Gold. Hipster Gold. It'll be made, made... out of my kitchen, but <laughs> the the pictures on Uber Eats have a much nicer kitchen. <laughs> yes, yeah. You could do like the mock up Uber Eats logo, but with like the Billion logo. So it'd be like. Billion oh, Eats. yes, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Just saying, just saying. You may be laughing at it now, but you never know. You may be like years later. Ooh, I remember that bs chili idea he brought up in that weird interview i like chili i've been talking about making some actually <laughs> well there you go <laughs> yeah that's why i'm laughing so i mean it's not that it's not just such a wonderful like premise <laughs> but it's uh i've all i was literally talking about making chili like yesterday go figure go figure <laughs> yeah it's that time of year it's getting it, a little chillier yes it is it is <laughs> yeah definitely want my hipster my hipster gold chili <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay I got I got a I got another if question for you. This one's a little bit more different. Um, if you were starring in a buddy cop movie, okay, w- which Digimon would be your partner in crime? Um. Oh boy. Uh, my partner in crime probably. Okay, so the Digimon's either Gorillimon. Okay. Or Gorilla Mon. He's got like a cannon for an arm. And I just think a trench coat would look real nice on him. Ooh, that would be actually really yeah. cool on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little sunglasses kind of like situation. Yeah. I could yeah, because they always wear like trench coats in the show whenever they're disguising themselves. And I just love the, uh, in some of the shows when they get really big, that premise of trying to hide them gets real funny. And I, I like that idea of having a real big sidekick who i have to try to hide as like he's nine feet tall you know gonna have to try to hide through the bushes you know when you're trying to yeah. scout someone or trying to hide like underneath like the tunnel or whatever like uh, uh, walking around like the city uh, you know? he's the kind of guy when i say hey don't look now but i think that's our guy and he'll go <laughs> 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 yes yes I, I i can see it now you know yeah. fox you be hearing this or um four kids if you're hearing this i don't know who owns it actually in oh. the english uh i i think it's saban who used to okay. do power rangers and still owns some things okay yeah. okay okay <laughs> sounds well we're gonna contact them and be like this yeah. is our pitch yeah. right here um and actually it's funny you mentioned power rangers because it leads to my next question um it's a crossover episode based question yeah do you think that a crossover episode between ben 10 and the Power Rangers could work in modern times um, right now. Like as an animated project or it'd be a comic, I think would be the best way to do it. You do yeah. like a DC, like DC would publish some like, you know, like like three, three issue, three, four issue comic book. Uh, I think it would work. I think you can make any like kind of crossover like that work. The only thing I'm thinking of is Ben 10 villains don't have the scale as like the Power Ranger villains get yeah. at the end of the episode. But Ben 10 does have that one big alien, way big. That's true. That so, could be kind of the force around it. Yeah. So maybe so Ben will kind of, you know, fight with them small in the first half, like yeah. they always do. And then he'd get big with them yes. at the end of the episode. So it'd work fine. Yeah. I like the writer's logic. We're going to start really small and then have a villain that's just way big. That's, that's the whole premise. That's it. I, I always thought that was so dumb as a kid. But like, I wish I appreciated it more, right? Because I love giant monsters. It's uh, I I don't know if it's my favorite kind of pop. I think in terms of like pop genres, like yeah. superhero monster, that it's kind of my favorite. Like, very distinctly there. Yeah. 
Fair enough. Fair enough. I, I think yeah. it's I think it's pretty cool, and I think it has it, there's a there's a uh, I guess an aura about it, you know, especially when you're seeing it as a kid and you don't yeah. really understand what everything's going on, and you see these giant monsters battling around. That's why I always like like Godzilla, for example. You know what I mean? Like it's just larger than life. This fire breathing, you it know, radioactive on you, kind of. Yeah, yeah, the imagery is so grand. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it just, it's just burnt in your head for the rest of your life, basically. And there's that that's where that appreciation comes from, where it's just larger than life characters appearing on this magical box screen, or in this case, you <laughs> yeah. know, now laptop computer, you know, or wherever device you're watching it on. So it's just crazy. And just like that, we're halfway through the interview. Just like that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, you, you keep keep a what is it? You keep a, a smooth boat? Is that the phrase? <laughs> I try to. I don't think I don't think a smooth boat's the phrase. But it are you calling me a smooth right. boat? <laughs> no. Well, thank you. <laughs> uh, you're in a tight ship. That's the line. <laughs> I feel I feel like that's even weirder than smooth boat. <laughs> yeah, kind of. I like smooth boat. You're on a smooth boat here. I'm going to write that down. I might use that at some point. Please use that as a line. Only one person's going to get this until the interview comes out. And be like, oh, that's think, a line. I think some people will appreciate it. It's got to have, like, no context. It's just got to be yeah. said, you know? Like, You're on a smooth boat around. Just, it's, it's like Biff from Back to the Future when he says you got to make, like, a tree and get out of here. He just thinks he's heard it right, but he hasn't. Yeah. <laughs> There goes the smooth boat. I just crashed. Just crashed. <laughs> just crashed the smooth boat. Yeah. It just <laughs> it just crashed into a boulder. It doesn't crash. It just bounces. <laughs> <laughs> the question is, what did it bounce off of? I uh, I don't know. <laughs> Jesus. This is this is a hell of an interview. What's the smooth boat riding on? Is it even in the water? It's 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 riding on 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 david hasselhoff like in the spongebob yeah, yeah. movies well have you seen the actual like model they used for that yeah yeah that's what that's a smooth boat it's the, it's the plastic model of david hasselhoff they used to film the spongebob movie yes yes exactly that the one that yeah. took like over like 23 hours to make or something crazy it's probably even longer than longer. that i mean like any props for movies are way more expensive than you think they are that's true. For, that is. I mean, if you might overvalue how or overinflate how much they do cost, so I could see that as well. Well, yeah, oh yeah. Well, as someone who does work in productions, you do as well. But someone who has worked with more formal productions and like prop masters and stuff like yeah. that, yeah, it's ludicrous how much money is spent. Oh yeah, and how much time is on on special effects and 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 FX and props and stuff like that. So it's insane. yeah. I mean, I just ludicrous. spent an insane amount on hard drives. Yeah, just like just little metal plates, you know, <laughs> that sit in a box. Spend thousands of thousands of dollars. I, I know. Yeah. It's like I've never been so disappointed to un like when the Amazon box comes, it's such a disappointing open, you know. It's like, oh, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> that's what drained my bank account. That's 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 what happens when you become an adult. Just like things get more and more disappointing yeah. as you're getting stuff. It's like saying <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, I, I was just gonna. It's like car, like when the car insurance bill comes every six months. It's like, yeah. you know. Yes, absolutely. Or it's like for Christmas, if you celebrate holidays, it's like you get the pair of socks, and it's like, yes, you do appreciate it, but then it's just like this is the most depressing gift you can give. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, but like, I get depressed that I get excited about it. Oh okay, yeah, it's, yeah, 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 yeah. Because it's like it, it's like there, it, there should be more to this, but there is just that. But I mean, like people have kids, you know. Yeah. I guess that's I don't want to say that's why people have kids, but <laughs> because like, they want to give them socks. Like, yeah, but I mean, you know, the it, that's I feel like that's why Christmas is such an important thing to many parents is because it's it's that's recapturing that feeling, right, right, you know, for the first time and. uh you know, I'm hoping to have some like, I don't know, nieces and nephews in my life that, to give gifts to. To give socks to. Yeah, to give socks to when they get like 24. And now I'm like, now it's your turn. <laughs> like You're giving the socks now. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> All righty. Let me steer this smooth boat and get back yeah, going okay. on it. <laughs> Billiam, one of my favorite videos you've ever done, and this one gets a lot of flack, is the Crocodile Hunter movie review. Yeah. 
it's it, it it's because of its absurdity obviously it's wild it's wild it is so wild i didn't even know this was a thing until you reviewed it and i was like i got oh watch did you this. not no i knew nothing about this that's what i was like what the crocodile hunter made a movie and then so, when i'm watching your review i'm like what is this movie you were asking me like how i pick topics that was one where i saw that as a kid yeah. and it just entered my brain one day and i dropped everything i was working on to quickly make a video about it because <laughs> i when nobody's made a video about something like that i get nervous I get oh, really? so nervous somebody else is going to post something because a lot of the time with something like that specifically, the uh, the appeal to a viewer watching it is they've never seen somebody cover it. Uh, but, you know, that's so going back to that question. But yeah, that movie, I love that movie. And also, I'm pretty certain today might be the 15th anniversary of his death. Oh, is it? Uh, uh, it was either, t it's like very, within the past couple days, I think. Ooh, okay, I, I as of recording this, obviously this episode is going to be aired later, but we're recording on November 15th, so um, I will fact check that and see uh, after this episode. Oh, oh way oh, off. Oh, you're way off? Oh, okay. <laughs> way <laughs> off. I don't know why. I think somebody posted something about him today, and I just assumed, oh, yeah, it was 2006, so it must be the 15th year anniversary. <laughs> oh, my God. But that movie, <laughs> going yes. back to... You know, it's just wild. I mean, the government needs to get Steve Irwin. Yes, obviously, obviously, because yeah, he is—he's he, he's the crocodile hunter for a reason. He doesn't he he shouldn't the have satellite that power. ball. Yeah, that's what happens in the movie. He steals the satellite ball. Yes, <laughs> and now the government's on him. This is like yeah, Die US, Hard, but with the animals. The U.S. government, like, <laughs> they pull no stops trying to get Steve Irwin in that movie, and I'm pretty certain. I'm pretty certain, like, he ends up thinking the government agents are poachers. Yeah. And so, like, That's he right. lights them. And there's this scene where, like, he pulls a gun on Steve Irwin. And throughout, like, it's been about 20 minutes since Steve has addressed the camera because it goes back and forth between, like, this narrative film with, like, these government agents and a documentary-style film with the Irwins because they shot it that way because they can't act. Yeah. And so right. the... <laughs> The, the guy points a gun at Steve Irwin and it's been a good 20 minutes since we've seen anything documentary. And then he just out of nowhere looks at the camera and goes, crikey, this guy's a lunatic. <laughs> <laughs> and then he like, he like karate chops him, which I, I didn't know this when I made the video, but Steve Irwin is apparently a very skilled uh, martial artist. Yeah, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he, I think Brazilian, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or at least some grappling uh, the martial, martial art. Uh, I mean, for handling the animals, probably. I mean, yeah, or, you got you got no, to fight just crocodile to someone's somewhere. ass, whichever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Especially man. poachers. Yeah, I you mean, know? poachers got to get down, man. Is one way to knock them out, and that's what you know, a crocodile fist. Yeah, and my favorite part about that movie, though, yeah, is the end credits have a cover of Elton John's "Crocodile Rock" performed by the Baja Men. That's right. And it's so <laughs> random. It's so, it's so bizarre. My favorite part, and I do this, so my friends all knew I see, saw this movie and I did a video on it. Right, right. So I never remember my friends who all love Elton John and they're listening to Crocodile Rock. Uh, so in the Bond Men version, they go, oh my crikey, a few times. And so I'll say, I'll just sing that in the Elton John version. <laughs> I really think it needs to be remixed back in. Before we lose Elton John, we need to get him in the booth to record a few oh my crikeys. Okay. All right, all right. We're gonna we're gonna send this to Elton John's people. Okay, yeah. Okay. We're gonna say, hey, Elton John, you're not busy right now. Can you re-record some lines right now? I mean, like people release like artists like that release remix versions of their music all the time. It's yeah. time for Elton John to fulfill the prophecy. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Well, absolutely. We're gonna be the ones that are delivering yeah. that prophecy. I this promise be you like, that. It's like in in the moments in pop culture history where there's been fan motivation to create something, it's going to be like changing Sonic the Hedgehog's design in the Sonic the Hedgehog movie. And then we're going to be up here with getting Elton John to perform the Oh My Crikey remix of Crocodile Rock. <laughs> oh my God. We're redefining history here, my friend. That's right. <laughs> they said they said, they said said back in the day, we can't create history. Well, they're wrong. We're going to create it They said it right I was here. a fool when I said I wanted to do this. <laughs> Well, they were wrong. Well, let's kickstart like all $8 million that it would take Elton John to do this. 
<laughs> we'll give eight million dollars in an Uber Eats commercial, and there we go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then he can get some of my chili. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, there's a reason why we're doing this interview. There's a method to this madness. No, exactly. We've already been over this. You're on a smooth boat. <laughs> Oh my god what was my question again oh yeah okay uh, my actual about question the, the crocodile, crocodile hunter movie. movie i don't even remember the question okay the question i had was as a man of great taste and culture yeah so clearly clearly is there an absurdist actor or absurd movie that you either want to review in the future or maybe if there's an upcoming movie or production you would like to be a part of a couple answers i guess Okay. Um, in terms of a video project, I really want to do a video on, and it might be the next thing I do after Lost. Like I have the next th uh, two Lost videos filmed. Okay. And it's such a process to get them edited because I'm essentially writing new drafts over the video I've already filmed. Of course. Uh, and so I think after I post this next one, hopefully Saturday, I'm going to make a video about the only movie Dr. Seuss ever wrote. Mm. It was released in 1955, and it's called The 5,000 Fingers of Dr. T. And when Dr. Seuss wrote it, it had like a 400-page script, so they had to like cut it down incredibly. And he oh hated God. the end product so much that he decided not to, uh, like, not he decided never to like be involved directly in theatrical film ever again. Wow. Uh, and the movie's like this weird, like post cold but not post cold war post world war ii mm -hmm. uh like fantasy narrative with this little kid who has this strict piano teacher who's dating his widowed mother and they're gonna get married and he only wants to let him play piano but he wants to play other instruments and so he has this dream where he's inside his world that he controls and he forces everyone to play piano and the set designs all like dr seuss-esque so like and it's very uh cinematic though okay and so i'm trying to think of like there's a lot of like extreme angles with the buildings and the shot composition uh and they use a lot of map paintings and like inter really cool sets like it's just a bizarre film and there's some great moments in it that one would make for great youtube content and two that just make for a really interesting story and then also just dr seuss himself has such an interesting history with uh propaganda before world war ii yeah he's and a so very I just, interesting figure to say the least yeah yeah and like he uh you know he he did he had a lot of controversial uh, like things that he published but he yeah. also had a lot of like things that would be considered very progressive that he published and it's just uh it's just a very it's specifically that his, that time in his history would be interesting to explore so that's kind of something i'm thinking about doing next huh. Well, very yeah. cool. I, I'll be intrigued on that. I, I've never heard of the movie itself, and if someone has watched a lot of obscure stuff too, I've never heard of it. So this is new to me. So yeah, I watched it last year sometime. It was it was just awesome. Like such a I'm really into weird film. Like I watched this one movie called Donkey Skin the other day. Okay. Because it was on Guillermo del Toro's like uh, I don't know if it was explicitly a foreign film recommendation list. Okay. Um, but it's a French film. And I feel like it really inspired Shrek a lot. Mm -hmm. And so very fantasy, like uh, subversive fantasy kind of thing. Uh, and so it's based on a fairy tale that was, I think written by Hans Christian Andersen, but unlike his other things, it didn't kind of leave the French region a mm -hmm. lot in terms of its popularity. And the story is that a, uh, a king is told by his dying queen that he could only remarry somebody who's as beautiful as her. And so like he meets all the other queens and princesses in the land and inevitably it comes to the only person that is as beautiful as his wife is his daughter. And his daughter's like really weirdly not like disgusted by it. And so she goes to her fa fairy godmother and her fairy godmother's like, no, you need to like get away from your father. And so she has him like, she has her wear this like stonky skin on her and then like she only puts her dress back on to like do the dishes it's really strange oh that's a weird it, it, yeah what it has the... this weird music to it and i'm gonna spoil the ending but she makes this new prince okay. and she's all happy with him but in like the final scene in the movie a helicopter comes out of nowhere what the... yeah and what? It, it, i'm serious i'm dead serious 
And the, the his, her father really looks like kind of like Lord Farquaad and his whole design. And so she comes out of the helicopter with the fairy godmother and now they're married. And the final line in the movie is the fairy godmother looks at the the girl and she says, don't look so upset, it's your father's wedding day. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just so weird. So bizarre and out there. And it's considered a children's film. Like, sure, uh, of course I mean, it is. Yeah, yeah, it's very, it's very Shrek-like. Uh, and there's like, oh my God. So like in the castle, uh, I would have to censor this, but there's like people like posing as the statues nude. And mm. so the whole scene's just existing around them as they're standing there. And I just think that's such an interesting, weird thing. And I actually, I'm so sorry. No, I good. actually think that comes Don't from a sorry. different, I think that comes from another French film though. I think that comes from the French Beauty and the Beast, which is like considered to be one of the like great fantasy films. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's yeah. considered by many. So, yeah. okay. Well, interesting. Extremely interesting. So stuff like that, I guess. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> now I know your wheelhouse a little bit more. So, hey, <laughs> teaches their own. So, but no. I well, I just think it'd be good YouTube content. It would. It would be. Yeah. It, I think you got you got two solid ideas right there. So, I'll, I'll give I'll give you that. I want to talk about coffee. Yeah. You are a big coffee fan. With your endless big coffee energy, can you tell me what is the best type of coffee to have for someone who knows nothing about coffee? I think. Uh, if you would, do you know nothing about coffee? Or, well, I, I know, I know some stuff, but maybe there's someone that's watching. And it's like I've never had coffee before. What I is would say, this? well, it depends on what you're looking for out of it. Okay. I mean, a lot of people just want convenience out of coffee, hmm. you know. And so, like, you know, my my friend Nico always rolls his eyes when his parents come over and like stay at his place, and they have like the gallon of Folgers. Yeah, but, which is considered, you know, by many. Yeah, horrible, but that's what works for them, you know? Like, for many people, coffee is just, an, an, like, an ends to the mean. But, I mean, if you're not into coffee and you want to drink it, I guess cold brew coffee in general. Okay. Just because it's it's less, uh, it generally has sweeter, like, uh, notes in it, and it's less harsh, for sure. Mm -hmm. And it's even it's even better for you in some ways. Like, it's less likely to stain your teeth because the brewing process doesn't create as much acid. Um, and it's that's also better for your stomach, too. Like, okay. long-term. If you, like, if you drink coffee on an empty stomach, that can screw you up real bad <laughs> because of how acidic, and I'm sure there's other things in it, too. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I would say you just, you really need to start looking because, and try different coffees, I guess. Find brewing methods that are, that work for you that you can do, like a French press or a pour over. And then try things. Like, I really like, uh, Guatemalan coffee. Okay. It sometimes tastes very fruity. I mean, but then also I've gotten Guatemalan coffees that taste nothing like that before. So, I... I, uh, I'm not, I don't know. I don't know if I'm the, the recommendation expert here. But you have endless big coffee energy, so I'm I assuming do. that I, you, you're the master of this. So here's what I drink. Okay, what typically. do you drink? I drink, uh, I, typically I'll have an espresso stocked in my house. Okay. And I, I have like a, an electric, I'm very, I have a very, my coffee bar is very, very fancy. <laughs> not, it's not as fancy as a coffee bar can get though, I mean. Uh, not yet. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I think I'm, I'm good. There's some, there's some caps I set on my, I just need to set on my life. I don't need to, you know. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, so I have an electric coffee grinder, so I generally keep a whole bean espresso, and I just experiment with different things. Okay. Um, and I haven't really found something I like too much yet, to be honest. Uh, I need to start ordering some stuff and like. Uh, I, I drink, generally drink Cafe Bustella uh, Supreme, Classic. though. I, I think it's called Supreme or Superior or something like that, which is they'll have in whole beans more frequently at my grocery store than the other stuff. Okay. And then I stock uh, Chameleon Cold Brew Jar. Mm, I've had yeah. that before. It's it's pretty pretty solid. Yeah, I like it because it mixes well with things. Yeah. Because it's a concentrate. And so I like to drink oat, uh, coffee with oat milk a lot. Uh, oh. I, I'll drink it black a lot too, but uh, I, I find the oat milk is just like makes it a little easier to like on my stomach and stuff. Yeah, yeah. nice. It's a nice balance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, cool. Well, thank you. Thank you for telling me your your coffee insights. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got gotcha. you. If you have, is there a mantra or saying that speaks with you when you're creating your videos? <sighs> 
it, and there may not may not be one. There's you know. actually there is one we've been using this year. So I've recently started working with an editor this year, uh, my friend Nico, who I've known for a very long time, mm -hmm. and uh, we used to he used to help me with videos like way back when, and then just through our lives developing, he. We, we, we grew apart because he moved away and we'd only see each other every so often, but just through happenstance, we now live in like the same apartment community. That's cool. And so he, he's an editor for me. And at the beginning of this year, our mantra became every video a banger. And so the goal with that is that we're just going to be proud of every single one we put out and there's going to be a purpose behind it. And if it needs an extra day, we're going to take an extra day. And, uh, just making sure that we're proud of what we're putting out. And I think that just in the past year uh, has really changed the way I, I like handle creation. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's been, I think Sissy, since I've seen your content for a long time, um, for years now, I've definitely seen the development that you've had from your traditional videos that you've been making some fun, like, let's say your sonic you know wtf moments for example, yeah yeah so like what are you doing now where you're doing more film-esque and more film-like content um and, and making you know you've always had high quality but now it's like there's a lot of thoughts to the madness that i've noticed and that other viewers have noticed so like your progression has been you know has been a great evolution of your character and what you're trying to portray um with your videos Oh, well, thank you. That I, I mean, we don't we don't talk too frequently, so it's uh it's nice to hear like the how you've witnessed, you know. It's it, and it's yeah. it's true, you know. Myself and you know, I have I have friends and, and family that watch your stuff as well, and you know, um, and we've all have our different insights, and you know, every time we see you doing something, we're like, oh, Billy's doing something crazy, or he's on you know an article or whatever, we're like, oh, you know what I mean? It's just so crazy. <laughs> Um, I know I'm gushing, but it's just, you know, it's oh, nice oh. to see that. I always like to see not just yourself, but those that I've, you know, worked with or been a part with or were friends, you know, over the years reached where they want to be. And they're just trying to do creative projects and, yeah, endeavors I, and highlighting their stuff. You know, that, that makes me happier than anything. Yeah, that's been something that I feel like has really been important to me recently is just finding people who are creators yeah. and have that drive because it's like, I mean... Uh, just being around people like that, it feels good, you know? It does. It, it, yeah. it's, not, it's nice to have that little community, you know? And you may not have the exact same interest, but you're all kind of doing similar goals or, or, yeah, you're, you, or you're in the same little mindset where you're grinding, you're making stuff, and you don't know if this is going to be good or this is not going to be good or whatever the case may be. You know, it's nice to yeah, have you all get it. Are, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm just saying you all get it, like, like the whole process, you yeah. know? Yeah, it's absolutely. just on the same page as everyone else. Mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. the maker community, you know? <laughs> yes, the, 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 the creation community, you know, the media community, yeah. the entertainment community, whoever, whatever you want to call it, it's just that big hub of, yeah. of, of like-minded people. And it's just exciting. I mean, like, you know, seeing like somebody like we went to high school, like Malcolm Flavel, and he puts out albums. Yeah. And it's like, that's cool. I mean, just it takes so long to put that together. And that's just, you know... It's just, it's, it's cool to see people continuing to pursue those things, I guess, you know, in life and uh, aside from like uh, other parts of their lives and all of it. Mm -hmm. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Uh, shout out to him. I, I know him as well. And he's been doing some great work in his music and, and, so, and there's so many talented creators um, that have been doing such amazing projects. So yeah. It's nice. It's nice to give some compliments around. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes. Not all the Sometimes. Time. Not all the time. Sometimes. Not all the time. <laughs> So, um, I have one final question to ask okay. you, Billiam, and this is a question that I'm asking every single guest here on These Are Questions Season 3. Um, I am making a music playlist this season, and I'm asking each guest to tell me, and you can give me up to five songs if possible, um, what are your top favorite songs that define your personality? Define my personality? Yes. Oh, uh... No pressure. <laughs> okay pressure. all right yeah there's a little pressure this is i didn't contemplate this question give me a second to just like yeah, contemplation go for, go for, oh the personality for. part's difficult because mm -hmm. <laughs> i could give you five songs that throw on the playlist easily uh oh i'm just going through some things in my head okay all right we got one okay What's i'd say one? helplessness blues by the fleet foxes Ooh, okay. yeah okay i like that it's yeah. like kind of like you know i just want to 
what we were just talking about. Just want to be around people and be a part of something, you know, like, and I, that's how I see it at least. Uh, <laughs> what else? Five songs. At it doesn't I'm have to be for... five, but it can just be a couple, you know, because well, ev everyone I've asked things. this question so far have given me completely different responses and reactions. So it's a great question to ask. All right. Here's what I'm going to do. Okay. I'm going to name a couple songs that I've been listening to recently, and then I'm going to justify why they're a part of my personality. Sure. So uh, we got oh, hold on. I've been listening to this album. Okay. So we're going to throw one off here for all the young people in the crowd. Okay. So the first one is uh, like maybe the second or third track off of Olivia Rodrigo's album, Sour. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm listening to Sour a whole lot. Uh, maybe tr not Trader. I mean, I don't have vitriol for an ex currently, so maybe this isn't the best well, with, with Olivia Rodrigo, the one song I've been listening to is Brutal. That's been, you know. That's, that's pretty, been, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that fits, that, that I relates like, a lot to me. The Way You Are by Tears for Fears. I've been listening to Tears for Fears endlessly recently. Mm -hmm. uh, they are a great band. I adore them. Mm -hmm. I could just fill this whole thing with Tears for Fears tracks. It's just, they're beautiful. <laughs> uh, so there's another one. And I like that one because the beginning lyrics say, uh, going far, getting nowhere. <laughs> and, you know, I feel like when I'm trying to get work done days, I feel that way sometimes. Sure. You know, uh, and then let's throw let's throw a curveball at you. Why not? Uh, Why not? Let's go. I don't have it yet. I was hoping okay. in the time that it took me to say that I would get it. It's okay. Uh, and <laughs> you know, you know, curveballs and stuff, life and stuff. Let's say Tears for Fears, the Bad Man song. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> because I like it a lot right now. It's a good song. <laughs> yeah, and I've listened to it about 700 times this year. So that's like that. It becomes my personality because I don't, I never stop talking about how good it is. There we go. Those we three go. songs. I'll take it. I'll take three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. It's going to be at the end of the season. We're going to have a nice playlist of all the songs that each guest had had insight and also trouble trying to figure out. <laughs> okay, that's fun. <laughs> so. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be a nice, nice, bizarre playlist when it's all done. I hope it goes well together. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so too. Yeah. We'll, we'll find out. We'll find out. <laughs> we are at the end of our interview. William, it's been a pleasure interviewing you. Um, but now the floor is yours. Anything you want to talk about, anything you want to promote, anything you want to say, any last words, this is your time to shine. Oh, promotion? Uh so I've been hopefully. This video about Lost I've been working on for literally, I started watching the show in January. It's November now. And, at the time uh, of this recording, too. Yeah, at the time of this recording, recording. it's November now. Uh, and so just if that's out, go to my YouTube channel. Just look up Billiam. And if that's out, sit down for, I'm. it's looking like two hours and 53 minutes right now. So if you have an afternoon, a whole afternoon, yeah. where your family doesn't want to see you, where like, you know... <laughs> Uh, you don't have any work to do and you don't have anything better to relax with, then spend two hours and 53 minutes watching me talk about only one season of Lost. <laughs> oh my. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be emotional. It's a feature it's film. <laughs> it is. It is. Just for, just for the first season. Just for the first season. I'm hoping to do all six. Oh my goodness. That's going to be when you combine all of it together, it's going to be like like the trilogy. Like, what is it? Lord of the Rings? Or yeah. uh, it's going to be like just like this 10 hour epic. Well, The Great Gatsby's 37,000 words. Okay. I, I my, my first video is more than that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. So I've written oh, one, no. The Great Gatsby on Lost. <laughs> uh, no, it, yeah, that's not my first video. That's going to be the first two videos, excuse me. Okay, but still, like, yeah, I wrote them together, like, you know, the Pirates 2 and 3. Okay, okay. Because okay. that's the scale I'm going for. Going all big, yeah. all big, yeah. all big. Um, okay, okay. Yeah. Cool, cool. All righty. Well, with that, Billiam, like I said, it's been a pleasure. It's great to talk with you. It's been a while, so it's great to catch yeah, it's been up. it's a blast. And thank you i'm glad i'm glad it's been fun hopefully we do some stuff in the future you never know who knows yeah in a more uh shorter time span 
Yeah, yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. So definitely. Um, but with that, um, all I just got to say is, hey, y'all, wait, wrong, wrong, wrong creator. Sorry. Hey, whoa. whoa. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm just messing. What I meant to say is thank you, everyone, for listening and watching this episode of These Are Questions. Everything's going to be available in the links in the description down below, wherever you're watching or listening on this episode and the playlist that we're going to have. And um, with that, thank you so much. Have a great evening. And I'll see you all later. Good night, everyone. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Thanks for being a part of it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>